Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about Zoho AI agents, aka Zia agents, including the official announcement, the agent gallery, agent studio, action groups, knowledge, and instructions so you can do less and accomplish more with AI. Now, I'm Drew Brockbank. I'm the owner of Brockbank Consulting, an elite Zoho partner, and I've implemented Zoho for over 141 organizations. How exactly are Zia agents going to make your life better? Well, I want you to think of Zia agents as ChatGPT, except it has all of the context of the information sitting in each of your Zoho applications, and it has the ability to trigger automations in your various Zoho applications. That's really the important thing to take away. But I wanna get you thinking of all the different ways that a Zia agent could help you. So think of an AI agent in Zoho that could nurture contacts for you automatically because you just don't have the time to do it yourself. Think of an agent that could help your customer schedule appointments with you and manage your calendar because you don't have the time. Think of an internal training agent that could show employees SOPs and courses as they ask questions to the Zia agent because you don't want to be the bottleneck in all of your training. Think of an agent that stays in touch with existing customers to avoid losing accounts that you don't have time to reach out to manually. Think of a sales agent that you ask to convert a lead and merge a proposal and send it to a customer after a sales call. Think of a customer facing Zoho support agent on your help center that could help customers with their requests with the context of your entire knowledge base. Think of the ability to interact with multiple Zoho applications from one chat window interface. Think of the ability to analyze information from a single chat interface and think of the ability to trigger automations from multiple Zoho applications from one chat interface. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, Drew, that all sounds nice, but how do you know it will work like this? Well, I'm gonna break down the components of Azia Agent so you know exactly how it works. So initially you'll have what's called Agent Studio. And Agent Studio is where you can create these different agents from scratch. You'll see there's a marketplace, there's Agent Studio. So marketplace will be pre-built AI agents, but I think it's kind of hard to understand the value of these pre-built agents unless we break down the different components of an AI agent, which is where Agent Studio comes in. Okay, so you've got Agent Studio. What does that do? Agent Studio allows you to build it from scratch. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll have a chat window inside of Agent Studio and you'll prompt Agent Studio to create an agent for you. So it's not the chat that you'll have with the agent, it's you chatting with Agent Studio so that Agent Studio, agent Studio will build the agent for you, okay? A little confusing, but hopefully you're staying with me, okay? So hey, I need an agent that can manage my customer accounts and reduce churn. Now this is interesting because the example that Agent Force in Salesforce is highlighting isn't a continuously running AI agent in the background, but the one for Zia agents is. So we're gonna analyze both, but I'm gonna explain more on what that means for you in just a moment, okay? So that's not enough information. I need an agent that can manage my customer accounts and reduce churn, but it's enough for the agent studio inside of Zoho to get started. Then there's a prompt here to give it more information. Now think of being in ChatGPT, getting an output that you didn't want and putting more details um, to refine the output, okay? Similar thing that's going on here. Now the agent is, it. Uh, agent studio inside of Zoho is taking a first pass at creating the agent for you, okay? So it gave it a name, churn reduction account manager, um, account management, and then instructions for the agent. Analyze email conversation in each account record to identify high risk accounts, initiate email conversations with accounts. So not only is the agent able to analyze these email conversations that are happening in your accounts module. It's able to initiate the email conversation or send emails back. Maybe it's creating drafts, maybe it's sending to uh, sending the emails, but I'm gonna show you how this works and then it's using the Zia large language model, okay? Curious to see if you'll be able to switch out the LLM there. Okay, so um, really interesting thing here. So this information we kind of already knew. But if as they scroll down, this is where I think it's really telling on how this is going to work. So s very similar to what we're going to see in Salesforce um, Agent Force, which is their Zia agent equivalent, right? So age, um, action groups are the different things that you are allowing the Zia agent to do. Now, this might be a little um, 
This, this might be tougher to understand if you are, let's say, a solopreneur. And as a solopreneur, you're like, why define the action groups? I just want whatever I tell the agent to do when I'm chatting with it, I want it to be able to do it. Well, that's if you're a solopreneur. But imagine you're in an organization with like 500 other people and you're creating a Zia agent for a specific department. You don't want them to have Wild West level permissions to do whatever they want inside of Zoho in any application for everybody. Okay. You don't, you don't want to give that much power to the agent. So you need to specify what actions it can take on your behalf. So think of an agent, an AI agent as a chat GPT chat that has the context of all of your Zoho data, and it's able to uh, trigger workflow rules on your behalf. And if you don't know what workflow rules, workflow rules are, it's a it's essentially uh, the way that Zoho can take actions on your behalf. So you can have a workflow rule that when a lead is created, send a lead welcome notification. Um, here, here's a send email one. You can have it create events for you. There's, there's not really a limit to what actions workflow rules can take for you. Okay. Uh, but that's the action groups. So these are the things that this specific agent are able to do. And it seems like you'll be able to add quite a bit more Then you've got knowledge. This is the context that the Zia agent already has product details. Now, I hope you don't have to add these things in. I hope that this bot is smart enough to say, okay, based on the request and the instructions, this is the information I'm going to need to pull from the system. And I would love if, especially for smaller orgs, that don't want to deal with the specifics of what knowledge it can access. It would just be great to have a catch all all the information in the system is fair game. That's where I think these things are going to be extremely powerful. Then you have guardrails. So fairness and bias guardrails, toxicity checks. So if someone's asking how to do something inappropriate, then uh, the chatbot will just say can assist with that request. Okay. So we're going to pause here and we're going to transition over to this example from agent force, because I think it's very telling and to be quite honest with you, just to be frank, I think Zia agents will have to have the different components we're going to see here. Now, the biggest difference between what we're seeing in this example, in this animation slash video, and what we're going to see with agent force is this agent is supposedly designed to work in the background churn reduction agent, um, account manager. If you remember right here, analyze email conversations in each record to identify high risk accounts, initiate email conversation. That seems, I don't see where the trigger point is for that, right? It must be running continuously in the background, watching as emails come in and responding to them. Maybe the trigger point is a new email for each account, but I don't think so. I think this is running continuously in the background, which would be huge to, to be able to set it and forget it and analyze how it's working. Okay. That would be great. I really hope that's a capability because that's what it's demonstrating in the announcement video that we just saw here. But for agent force, it works differently. And we're going to break this down because I think these are components that we'll see in Zia agents too. Okay. So you have topics. Okay. And it's going to give you a preview uh, to put, uh, put us in a situation. Okay. So this works pretty differently. This one's an internal agent, right? This is an internal agent for, for sales, churn reduction account manager, or maybe customer success. This is a customer facing, so external facing um, agent. Imagine this one right here is on your help center on your website, right? Where people go to see your frequently asked questions, your knowledge base, so they can read art help articles. Um, imagine there's a chat at the bottom, right? You click on it and you say, Hey, where's my order? Email is abcd at example.com gives you your order details. That is, I don't know that to me, isn't super impressive, but this is where it gets impressive is you can start to add these topics. Now in my mind, topics are the equivalent to in Zoho, what we're seeing as action groups. Okay. The actions that this uh, particular agent can perform. Okay. So order management, this was the user prompt. It triggered, it associated this prompt with this topic order management. And then there's instructions associated with the topic and then different actions associated. So again, a topic is like a group of different workflow rules. Okay. So if we keep going here, let's pull this up. Um, you're going to see that one of the ordered products is solar panels. So now what's interesting is you can add a topic for scheduling this. So this was, I mean, imagine being able to do this at scale, having the scheduling component done fairly well by an AI agent. So now 
they're going to add a topic for scheduling, okay? So they're gonna click here and this is where it gets interesting. So here's a topic label, not that interesting. Classification description. In one to three sentences, describe what your topic does and the type of user requests that should be classified. So think of a classification description as you describing when to trigger this topic. You're training the agent when uh, it should trigger um, this back and forth to execute a group of actions. Okay. Stick with me here. It's going to make more sense in a moment if it doesn't make sense now for you. Okay. So that's the classification description. And then you have the scope, which is give your topic a job description, be specific. For example, your job is only to, so you're dis describing what it should do so that it doesn't do what it shouldn't do. Okay. You're giving the AI instructions. This is not going to be dissimilar to when you were in ChatGPT and you are telling it exactly what you want from the output. Okay. You're giving it, you're, you're putting a scope around it. Don't do this. Make sure to do this. Okay. If you're writing a, write a slam poem in the style of Dr. Seuss, that's your job. Your job is to create a slam poem in the style of Dr. Seuss. Here's your input. Give me an output. That's your scope. Okay. That would be your scope in ChatGPT. Your scope here is exactly what it should be doing. So your job is to schedule an installation appointment for new products. Okay. Um, so now here for this instruction, um, you have additional parameters or things that you can teach the AI agent to do. So classification, that's really the trigger in which if someone's interacting with your AI agent, they're going back and forth. At what point should you trigger this, um, this topic? And the topic is a group of actions that it can take. Then the scope is exactly what it should be doing. Might seem a bit redundant, but they're different, right? Trigger exactly what it should focus on doing. And then some parameters, right? What are additional instructions before scheduling an appointment? Get the user email. Great. So now you're kind of defining the steps that need to be taken inside of this in order for it to happen correctly. Um, you can add an instruction to format the date in a consistent way. And what you'll do is you'll probably take a guess and be like, I don't know, I'm here's two instructions. And then as you notice, you interact with the AI agent and things go wrong, you'll add additional instructions to make the agent more sophisticated. Okay. So I anticipate that Zia agents will have this because I'm assuming that not each AI agent is going to work continuously in the background, but it will actually, you'll be able to, um, test the agent and go back and forth with it in the same way you have this conversation preview here. I imagine that's how it will work. Okay. If it doesn't, I would be shocked even though continuously running in the background and AI agents that are analyzing conversations like in this example, and then responding to accounts on your behalf might seem a bit scary, but it will get improved over time. It will be really interesting to see the effects there. Okay. So next component I want to focus on with you here is the actions. Okay. So you fill out each of the instructions, you fill out the classification and the scope, and then here you have the agent action labels. So now you're defining here's all these workflow rules or things that Zoho can do, check warranty, book appointment, whatever it might be. Now I'm giving this agent permission to do these things once this topic is triggered. Now this is where it gets interesting to me because being able to access one chat window and have all these different commands that it can trigger on your behalf is extremely powerful. So this is kind of uh, permissions slash actions that the agent can take. Okay, as we move forward with this, uh, you can see that when a action is selected, it takes them to the workflow builder so they can check it out and see, is this what you're wanting it to do? So you can revise that. You can change it, select the different actions you want to take place, or you want this agent to be able to do for you. And then there is, um, it will, you can test it again. Okay. So you see that this is again, the same prompt. My email is X and then another, uh, uh, message is sent by the user. I'd like to schedule installation. Okay. So the, the reason this works is because in the topic, if you remember, there's the classification, the classification says that if someone is trying to schedule installation for a new product, then trigger the new topic. So now you'll see that this topic should change from user prompt. I'd like to schedule installation. Now the AI is smart and it recognizes appointment management. Use this topic if the customer wants to schedule their product installation. So it matched. I'd like to schedule installation with use this topic for the product installation. Great. Let's get it started. Okay. So now it's going to, uh, take its own creative Liberty and how it's going to phrase these things based on the instructions that you gave it. Okay. So hopefully this is starting to make sense. 
And so um, it's going to ask for a preferred installation date. Those are some of the instructions that it was given. Um, and then you'll notice if um, it says tomorrow, it's smart enough to recognize what that date would be. But there were specific instructions that the earliest available date for the installation it has to be after the order date. Okay, so you can see how smart the AI agent is based on the instructions. And again, I know you're looking at we're looking at Agent Force and Salesforce. And you're like, what does this have to do with Zoho? Zoho has to have it already had the instructions component, right? But it has to have some like trigger classification style component to it so that it can work in chat and it already had action groups. Okay. So it's very similar. The reason I'm showing you this again, just to, I really want to hammer this home. This works in the background. This works with someone interacting with the chat. Okay. That's what I think is important. And I'm making a, uh, assumption that's going to work this way because if you look at the marketplace it's showing all these things that shouldn't just be working in the background i think you'll have to actually interact with the chat okay so that's that's why i'm i'm, I'm talking about that okay so next thing here is uh you can see that it has the ability to fish through all of your data in your calendar see when you have open slots and say hey are these time slots going to work for you so this is what's cool. It can retrieve available appoint, uh, available appointments. So it looks through the date, looks through available time slots, but because they said not morning, it was smart enough not to choose the AM, but only the PM options, okay? So it's, and it's basically, again, this is what's powerful is it has the context of your system when it's working. That's the thing that ChatGPT doesn't have. Like when you're working with ChatGPT, you're having to constantly load it up with relevant information in order to get good outputs for your situation. But that's what I love about what agents are going to do for CRM platforms is it's going to already have all that context so you don't have to feed it. It already knows. It already has your database from Zoho CRM, Zoho Desk, Zoho Analytics. It's going to have all that, which is awesome. Okay, so input date. That's the date that I gave it Friday, not morning. Output, it's going to fish that request to see the available times, but it was specified not morning. So it chose these two options and then gave them the two options here and asking them what they prefer. So this is this is extremely powerful. I mean, I think initially, honestly, it's it's going to be low quality if I had to guess for Agent Force and for Zoho. But I think over time, as these things get smarter and smarter, it's going to get easier and easier to create extremely powerful automations. We're going to go through this. I just want you to see the end of this um, agent response. Here we go. Um, Two thirty. Your installation appointment has been confirmed. Um, you can see that the uh, the the different um, topic here. I need cleaning my garage. There's like guardrails where it's like, that's not a topic. I can't help you with that. Ask something really inappropriate. So it's like, can't do that inappropriate content. There's some guardrails around it too. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a better idea. The reason I'm, I'm making this video, I just want it to be as clear as possible as to what are Zia agents? How is it going to benefit your life? How is it going to make your life easier or better? And how exactly is it going to work? And at the beginning, I, I rattled off all these different things that it could do. And it's like, yeah, you're saying it could do that, but how do you know? Well, now with knowing the components and how these things are likely to be built initially, now you can think to yourself all the different ways that once Zia Agents is released, what it will be able to do for you and your business.